Hey guys, how's it going? I'm back here with another video and today I decided to bring this video where I'm going to teach you guys um, the basics of um, fetching data using RTK query. For those who don't know, um, Redux Toolkit is a state management solution for React and it's very common. I have a couple of videos introducing it, but uh, within Redux Toolkit, there's also um, this ability to fetch data um, in a way such that it could replace something like React Query or uh, use SWR, those really common libraries. And the solution is using RTK Query. It is already built in to Redux Toolkit. And in this tutorial, I'm going to be assuming you know the basics of Redux Toolkit because this is not a Redux Toolkit tutorial. It is just an RTK Query tutorial. Um, so all you have to do to learn it is just have Redux Toolkit in any project and um, we'll start from there. But before we get into the video, if you could leave a like and subscribe, I would massively appreciate it. I will help push my videos to more people and I would be really grateful if you could do so. So with that in mind, let's get into the tutorial. As many of you might know, Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who loves learning. They have courses on a multitude of topics such as React, TypeScript, Node.js, and much more. A course that I took and I really liked was the Modern CSS Writing Better, Cleaner, More Scalable Code course by Harry Roberts. CSS is definitely one of my weak points in web development, and this course helped me find a better approach to learning the technology. One of the best aspects of Skillshare is that it is curated specifically for learning, meaning that there are no ads and they're always launching new premium classes so that you can stay focused and learn as many skills as you desire in 2022. The first 1,000 of my subscribers that click the link in the description will get a month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. Okay, everyone. So in order to start, like I said, we already have uh, some sort of project here, which um, has... Uh, Redux Toolkit installed. So if you come over here to my package.json, you'll see that I have Redux.js um, slash toolkit installed at this version over here. And you can see from my app that I have some of the initial stuff for Redux Toolkit, such as a provider and a store already set up. My project is pretty simple, literally has nothing. All it's doing right now is it's just displaying this component called data, which currently is completely empty. But um, what we want to do is we want to fetch data from this API over here, which is a public API called dummyjson.com. And this will just give us, um, as you can see, a list of um, stuff. In this case, we're getting a list of products. And this is the API we're going to be using to test. I'll leave a link for it in the description if you want to use it as well. But um, it's going to be pretty simple. That's all we're going to do. So in order to start setting up uh, RTK query, we don't need to install anything else because it already comes with Redux Toolkit. But the main difference is that you need to create something using a function from um, RTK query called create API. And we're gonna put that inside of our features folder, which is where you also put some stuff like your slices and stuff like that. So what we're gonna do over here is we're gonna create a file. I'm gonna call this file the API slice, just like this, and then say .js. And in this file, we're going to import some stuff from um, Redux Toolkit. So at the top, we're going to say import from at Redux.js slash toolkit, then slash query, and then slash react, just like this. So what we want to import is, first of all, the create API function. Then we want to import another function called the fetch base query. Now, whenever you need to use Redux Toolkit uh, to fetch data, it's almost always going to be very similar. So just understanding this few lines of code will allow you to be able to use this whenever you want. So all we have to do is we have to create a constant or a variable, which is going to in our case, it's going to let's call it products API, because we're fetching a list of products from this API over here. And then we also need to export it so that we can access it in other files. Then we're going to set this equal to create API. Now with the create API, um, it basically allows you to set a reducer path or a name for a reducer path. In our case, we'll just, uh, it's like a namespace. It's just, you're naming this so that you can identify it later. And we can call it similar to what we call the variable. We can just call it product API. It has, it's used to identify it uh, when we, we want to use it. Then um, with the create API, what we have to do is we need to set um, a base URL for which API we're fetching data. So no matter what we're doing with um, 
this specific API over here, all of the logic or all of the fetching that we're going to do is going to be written inside of this create API object. So if we had, if we wanted to have multiple queries, right, we wanted to query a list of all the products, we also wanted to query a list, uh, actually query one specific product, or we want to add a product or delete a product, uh, we would put everything inside of here. So to define this, we have to come over here and add a base query, just like this. And we're going to use the fetch base query function um, to set which API uh, we want to fetch data from. So over here, we'll pass what I what I mentioned, which is a base URL, just like this. And then we're just going to pass in the actual URL to the API that we want to make make the request to. But the important thing is you don't add the actual uh, like path. So here we're fetching products, we don't add products, we add the URL, uh, the first part of the URL um, over here, because then after this is where we're going to specify which paths or which uh, routes of the API where we want to specifically fetch data from. Then over here, we're going to basically create another thing called endpoints. And endpoints is where we're actually going to define all of the queries we want to have. So it's just a function just like this, that will return an object. And the object will contain all the different queries we want to have. So if I want to create a query, for example, for getting all the products in this API, all I have to do is I just have to set a name for it. Let's call it get all products, just like this, then we need to set this equal to something called a builder query. And you get a builder query directly from the arguments of this endpoints function. So we'll just grab builder over here. And we'll say builder dot query, just like this. Now we're saying query, because this is a query, but if you wanted to do create a mutation, which is, uh, for example, adding, deleting and updating something, we would say builder dot mutation, right? But we want to do a query. So we're going to say builder dot query, then we're going to set an object to this. And the object just like this, will have to define a query inside of you. Now the query again, will be a function. And at the end, we need to specify the path to which we need to fetch the data from. So what do I mean by that? Well, here, we want to get all the products, right? So in this API called dummy JSON, if we go to a slash project products like this, um, it would just give us the list of all the the data. But if we were to say something like slash products slash um, search, and then put something like this, and then search for something like iPhone, then it will just give us an iPhone. So there's different routes in this API, which is very common in different APIs. So what we put over here is just a string defining which specific path to which route we want to fetch the data from. So in our case, we're not fetching one thing like I just showed you with the search. What we're doing is we're fetching all of them. So all we have to put here is just products, because this is the path to give us all of the products, then I'm going to come again to Visual Studio Code. And for now, we'll just create this single uh, query inside of RTK query, I'm, I'm going to make another one just so you guys can get a better idea. But for now, let's just do it this way. Then at the end, we'll come over here, and we're going to say export const. And there's a very cool thing that RTK query does, which is, um, it creates a hook for all of your um, endpoints inside of here. So all of your queries that you create, and all of your mutations, it will create a hook for it. Now, what is the name of the hook? Well, if you set export const equal to products API, which is the variable we created over here, then the name for it will be use because it's a hook and then get all products, because it is the name that we put over here. And then we have to put query because it is a query. This is already pre made when you have the create API function. So we can just use it in other files. Now, what do we want to do with this? Well, we want to come to our to where we want to fetch the data. So any react components, such as in our case, the data one, and I just want to try using that hook. Now to do that, we'll just come over here at the top. And we'll say import, and we need to import from our API slice file. And I'll do that by going back twice, saying features slash API slice. And I want to impact like import the use get all products query function or hook inside of our component is where we have to call the hook. And what we're going to do is we're just going to say const equal to use get all products query. 
Now, there's a bunch of really cool stuff you can get from this hook. Uh, the main one is the actual data, as you can see, because the data is where we're going to get back from fetching the, the API. Now, let's test this out to see if it's working. I'm just going to come over here and I'm just going to console log the data if we have anything. And right now, it will actually not work. I know for a fact, if we come over here, you'll see it will give us a bunch of errors. The reason is because we haven't done one thing that is extremely important. In Redux Toolkit, and in many different libraries, which um, nowadays uh, utilizes something like this, like fetching data, or um, even libraries that uh, provide you a solution for managing your states, uh, you have to pass in a provider. Now you might say, okay, we already have a provider because Redux Toolkit requires you to pass a provider with your store, just like this. But when you have um, an API that you're fetching data from, you have to specify that API over here. So we need to import from a Redux uh, Toolkit. So I'm going to say import from um, at Redux.js Toolkit slash query slash react. We're going to import something called the API provider. And the API provider is just where you tell uh, Redux Toolkit uh, which API you want to pass in. And in our case, it is the products API. So we'll just pass this like this. And then over here, you just have to pass in a single prop, which is API, and then pass in the products API. Now, obviously, we haven't imported products API um, to this file. So we'll have to do that. We'll say import from and then go to features slash API slice and import the products API just like this. Now, this should be working. I'll refresh the page. I'll open up my inspect element, go to my console. And you can clearly see that we do have an object containing all the products, meaning that we fetched the data correctly from the API. At this point, I feel like you might already have some sort of knowledge of how this works to um, understand how to do other stuff in the library as well. However, I'll give you guys another example of actually putting arguments or um, parameters to your routes so that you can actually search the a specific uh, product like I, sh I showed you before doing something like this, right, where you're just adding a variable to your URL. So to do something like that, it's actually pretty simple. We're going to come over here back to our API slice, and we're going to add another endpoint. Now this endpoint is going to be called get product, because um, we're just getting a single specific product. And then we're going to say builder dot query, because this is a query, right? Now, the difference is that now when we say query over here, and we create a function for this, we're actually gonna grab a variable direct or an argument directly from this function. So we're gonna say something like product over here. And we'll just say that the URL for this, uh, or the path for this specific endpoint is products slash um, search. Uh, question mark Q equals to and then over here is where we have to put the actual product we're trying to search, right? So we can do something like, uh, actually, I'll make this into uh, backticks instead of uh, quotes. And I'll put uh, money sign and uh, the curly braces and then I'll just say product. Now this will allow us to specify uh, variables and make this whole API fetching dynamic. Now, how do we actually give the product that we want to search for? Well, uh, we got to pass over here a use uh, get product query, because like I said, each endpoint you create over here will uh, Redux Toolkit will create a hook for you. And then back in the data, we'll just import that one as well, just like this, use get product query. Now, we'll do the same thing we did before, but there's an issue, because you can't call both of them data. So if you want to actually change the name of uh, the data you get back to another variable, what you can do is you can just put a column like this and say, for example, this one is for all products, right? So I'm going to say all products data. And then this one, it should actually be use get product query, not use get all product query. And I'll call this um, single product data, just like this. Now we can console log both of them, right? I'll do it just like this. But the problem is, where are we specifying which product we're trying to search for in the single product one, we have to pass in this product so that it searches for it. So in our case, let's try to search for an iPhone just like I did over here. Well, to do that, you pass it directly in 
this part over here in the use get product query, you just pass in which specific thing you want to search for. And you'll see that if I come over here, and I inspect element, you'll see that now uh, it says, oh, it, it, there's so the the array ones, the big ones, which has a bunch of products is the first query, but you'll see there's two of them, which only shows two products. This is for the one that we just searched. See, it's only iPhones, meaning that it is correctly searching and fetching the data correctly. So this is really cool. But there's other stuff that you can actually get, which is similar to something like react query or use SWR. For example, you can actually um, get the error. If there's any errors, you can get a Boolean saying if there's any errors, you can do something if there is, you can get um, is loading, right is loading is nice because like, I can come over here and say, if is loading, um, then return uh, h1 tag saying loading, and then three dots, what this will do is while the data is loading, which is every time we refresh the page, it will say loading for a split second until it actually um, fetches the data, right? Um, there's a bunch of stuff. And there's actually a lot more to this library. I just wanted to make this introductory video because I felt like a lot of people were requesting it. I know it's kind of confusing. Redux is just a confusing topic as a whole. But if you want to check out all the code, it will be in the description, I can actually make a more in depth tutorial on RTK query, because it's just really cool. I really like it. Uh, I do use still use Re uh, react query and I prefer react query. But if I'm using Redux toolkit, then 100% I'll use RTK query because it's already built in. Um, and it's a good solution as well. So with that in mind, again, thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video. If you want to check them out, uh, the link will all be in the description. And yeah, that's basically it. Really hope you guys enjoyed it. And I see you guys next time.